Okay, in this series, we're going to be looking at completing the square, which is something that falls under the quadratics topic. And we're going to start off by looking at some skills before later on we look at some applications. So what I want you to do to begin with is I want you to expand the brackets of these things that we've got here, these things that are squared. So pause the video and expand them and see if you notice any patterns. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this. Just as a quick reminder, though, x plus 2 squared, if you find it easier, that's just x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 2 like this. Okay, so hopefully when you've expanded these brackets, this first one that you should have got would be x squared plus 4x plus 4. The second one would be x squared plus 14x plus 49. The third one is x squared minus 8x plus 16. And this one here, you should have got x squared minus 4 over 5x plus 4 over 25. That's probably a bit trickier because of the fractions that we've got there. And so my question is, what is it that we notice that's going on here? Well, I'm hoping that you've spotted that this last term, pretty obviously, is just the square of whatever this number is. So 2 squared is 4, 7 squared is 49, negative 4 squared is 16. Remember, a negative times a negative is a positive, And negative 2 over 5 squared is 4 over 25. So that's one of the things that we might have noticed. I'm then hoping that you might have spotted something to do with these middle terms that we've got here. The middle terms, we can also predict what they'll look like because of this starting point. It's actually double whatever this number is multiplied by x. So we have the 2 becomes 4x, 7, 14, minus 4, minus 8x, and minus 2 over 5, minus 4 over 5x. So that's one of the things that we should notice here. And so completing the square is going to be leading on, trying to basically go backwards from these kinds of things and forcing it to look like something over here. So let's have a look at this first one that we've got. Well, there's two ways we could do this, and we need to check that it works for both of them. First of all, this is the squared part, like the yellow part here. So we're probably thinking it's going to be something to do with a 5 in here. It's going to be an x plus 5 squared. But we need to check it would work with this middle term. Yep, 10x is the double of 5. It is 5 times 2. So this one can actually just be factorized as x plus 5 squared. Now the next one is almost going to look the same. It's definitely going to be a 6 because that's where we're going to get the 36 from. And the half of the 12 is actually going to be minus, sorry, it's minus 12 is going to be minus 6. So we get x minus 6 squared. Yep, that one is definitely going to work. Now this one's a bit different because there's nothing over in this squared part that we've got here. So instead, we're just going to focus on this middle section and think about how we would get to the number. Well, remember we said that the relationship was that the blue part was the same as this number, but doubled. So I think that is meaning that the thing we're going to have to have here is going to be an x with a plus 3 squared. But actually, if we had the x plus 3 squared, we know that when we would expand this, there should have been an extra plus 9 over here, which we don't have. So because there's this extra plus 9 that we should have, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove it and I'm going to subtract it here so that x plus 6, sorry, x squared plus 6x is just going to be equal to the x plus 3 squared minus 9. Remember, it would have had an extra plus 9, so we're just subtracting it over here. And you can expand this bracket to check. This would be x squared plus 6x plus 9 minus 9. Great, you're just going to get the x squared plus 6x. So I wonder if we can think what this next one here would be. Well, we're going to half this coefficient, meaning the number in front of the x. So we're going to have the x minus 4 squared. Now, actually, if we did the x minus 4 squared, we know that there in theory would be an extra plus 16 over here, which there isn't. So we're going to get rid of that extra plus 16 by subtracting it on this side that we have here. These things that we have done on these four lines here, these are all examples of things where we have completed the square. And I'll explain a little bit more about what that means in just a second. So we're going to try and take any quadratic and write it in a form that looks like this. So here is our x squared plus bx plus c form. This means there's no number in front of the x squared. This is what it means to complete the square. Well, what you're going to do, you're going to start off by halving the x coefficient. The x coefficient, we usually use the letter b for here. 
So you're going to um, halve that x coefficient and write it like this, and you're going to have it inside the squared part. And then you're going to subtract this value squared. Let's just see if that makes sense with this one that we did here. So we took the 6x, we halved that and put it inside here like this, yep. And then we subtracted that thing squared so that we got x plus 3 squared minus 9. Just, I, I wouldn't use this as a, something to memorize. I think it's much better to really understand about factorizing and expanding to spot the patterns. So before we actually do some practice with this, why is it called completing the square? Well, we have just worked out in that last example or penultimate example that x squared plus 6x is the same as x plus 3 squared minus 9. This is just the normal form and this form that we have over here is called the completed square form. Let me just jot that down. This is the completed square form. Why is it called completing the square? Well, this little visualization might help us think about what's going on here. So remember that um, algebra can often be representing other things. So in this case, I'm gonna show it representing some areas. Well, this first part, I want to represent x squared, and this next part, I want it to represent six x. Well, I think that means that the length of this square could be an x and an x, because remember when you find the area of something, you're multiplying them together, so that's an x squared. Now this length is still x, so you should be able to tell me that this length over here is actually going to be a 6. So that's this form that we've got here, and actually this is a positive and so is this. Kind of actually shows that it's the same as x multiplied by x plus 6. It shows that factorized form x multiplied by x plus 6. Anyway, let's have a look at this completed square form that we've got over here. We want them to be exactly the same. This means that we want them to always be equivalent to each other. So I need these areas to remain consistent here. Well, this is still going to be my x and my x to get the x squared part that we've got here. But actually, what we did is we halved this, this extra rectangle that we've got here, and we took one half of it and put it down on the other side to try and create this square shape. So that's why it's called completing the square. There's going to be this extra 3 here and here. This is going to be an x squared. This is going to be a 3x, and this is going to be a 3x. So it's still representing the same area. But this extra thing that we need to make sure of is that this little extra part over here would have an area of 9, and we have to subtract that area of 9 to keep the blue parts equivalent to each other. So it's called completing the square because we would have needed this extra 9, so we're removing it to say that it's still in that square form. Okay, in the next video, I'm going to do some examples with this. This first one was really just introducing the concept of completing the square. Next video, I'm going to do some examples, and you're going to try some afterwards as well. Found this video helpful? Then why not drop it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. If you'd like the next video in the playlist, you can click here to be taken straight to it. And as always, wishing you the very best for all your studies.